An hour is not a very long time, but it's long enough to change your entire life. Just ask Heather Gimmon. One night, her husband went to a church meeting and she put the kids to bed. Heather had just fallen asleep herself when something shook her awake. The light turned on in my room and I mumbled something like, Steve, turn out the light, I'm trying to get some sleep. And the light turned out and I opened my eyes and the man standing in my bedroom was not my husband. It was a stranger. It was Heather Gemmon's worst nightmare. She, her husband, and two children lived in a dangerous neighborhood in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Crime was everywhere. The tension between the two races, between the black and white race, was, was tangible. It was very evident. And so then you feel threatened, you feel afraid. Especially the night Heather was tied up and raped at knife point. What went through your mind? There were a few moments in there where I simply thought, I'm going to die. It was like it wasn't real. I didn't really believe this was happening. In fact, I said that to him. I said, what are, what are you doing here? It seemed like an eternity, but after an hour, the rapist left. Heather immediately went to check on her children, who were just steps from her bedroom. Surprisingly, they slept through everything and had no recollection of what happened. Heather, on the other hand, couldn't forget. How could he have done this to my life? Um, you know, he is so selfish, so wicked. His words were vile, um, disgusting, like vomit on me. And to, to think that somebody could do that to someone else, it, I just, yeah, I really wanted to hurt him. But at the same time, Heather struggled with guilt and shame. Any way I could blame myself, I did, even though Logically, I knew it wasn't my fault. Here I am in my own home. A man rapes me at knife point, ties me up, threatens the lives of my children. I'm obviously innocent, but I didn't feel that way. Other questions haunted Heather. What if the rape resulted in a sexually transmitted disease or pregnancy? All I thought was doom, 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 and I thought I'm definitely going to be pregnant. I'm definitely going to have AIDS, and my world's going to come crashing down. And um, Life is over. Yeah, I, I just didn't believe that anything would be okay again. Heather was desperate, so she followed a doctor's advice and took the morning after pill. I knew it was wrong, but I took it. <laughs> because I couldn't bear the idea of being pregnant. I thought, I, I won't be able to, to deal with it. I'm already overwhelmed mm -hmm. with the pain in my life. There was only one problem. I discovered that the pill didn't work, and I was pregnant as a result of the rape, and I felt trapped. Would Heather have the baby or have an abortion? Would she give the baby up for adoption or keep the baby herself? Here I was with three choices, none of them worked. I wanted door number four, <laughs> and there was no other option. And that's when God began to just soften my heart and work in me because I finally just turned myself over to Him, said, I can't do anything, <laughs> and I let go of this desire for control. Even after surrendering to God, it was still hard. And some of the advice Heather got really made her angry. There are times that people would quote scripture to me, you know, Romans 8, verse 28. God will make all things good for those of us who love him and are called according to his purpose. And it sounds so beautiful, but when you're in the midst of despair, frankly, you want to hit people with the Bible <laughs> when they say it because it doesn't feel true. But it was true. Heather had the baby and named her Rachel, and she decided to keep her. What started out as a gross violation turned into what Heather calls in her book a startling beauty. I couldn't have loved this child and recognized her innocence and seen her beauty um, and, and been able to separate her from the crime if it weren't for the Holy Spirit just working in our hearts. And the amazing thing is, is I have never, ever associated Rachel with the rape itself. Since Rachel was born, there have been some changes in the Gemmon family. Sadly, after standing by her side through everything, Heather's husband left. Perhaps he wasn't given enough 
care by me or by others in dealing with this, I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand what happened. But Heather pressed on. She remarried and even adopted a boy from the neighborhood named Deshaun. He thinks the world of his sister. I love my sister. But I just think about how God can do amazing things in our lives. And like, even if like, it's the worst thing, he can make it the beautifulest thing. The man who raped Heather is now in prison, and Heather no longer suffers from guilt or shame. She says the love of God set her free from that and helped her to forgive. I realized I needed to forgive him even though I had no way of knowing if he was sorry or not. I just had to forgive him. I am not going to hold him accountable. I'm trusting God to um, live out what Scripture says. God says it's mine to avenge. And I'm going to leave that with God. So who am I to say this person doesn't deserve to be forgiven? Heather has even been able to talk to Rachel about the circumstances surrounding her birth. She knows the word rape. She understands what happened. And once in a while, she'll say, Mom, I'm so sad. I don't like it, what happened to you. And then I'll say, me neither. I said, I hate what happened. It was awful. But if it didn't happen, then I wouldn't have my little girl. And she just glows and smiles. and. Um, in fact, she tells me, Mom, you're lucky you have a daughter, <laughs> and it's true. Heather Gemmon has come a long way, and she says all the credit belongs to God. When we give Him our problems and our bitterness, He is faithful to take care of those things, and we can forgive. The restorative power of God's love overwhelms me. The restorative power of God's love. He can do it. Now maybe some of you who are watching Heather's story today are feeling some of the th same things that she felt. Maybe somebody violated you as a child. Maybe you've gone through rape. Boy, I meet people every day who've experienced things like this. And you know, it fills you with so many layers of feeling. You almost don't know where to begin to try to flush that out, to try to figure out how to get out from under it. Heather discovered the secret. It's forgiveness. You know, it feels sometimes like you can't possibly go there because you feel so violated, so wronged. What you need to know is forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with covering the deed that's been done. It doesn't make it okay. And it's not also the other person being remorseful or sorry for what they did or even accepting your forgiveness. It's something that happens between you and God. But I know this from my own life. When you come to a place where you're willing to forgive, you don't have to feel great right about it, but you're just willing to be obedient to do the right thing. The windows of heaven break open before you, and there is a freedom that's from that that I can't explain. I just know it's a spiritual principle that works. So I ask you today, if you have been violated in any way by anyone, to be willing to be obedient and choose to forgive today. Not because you feel it, because God tells you that it's a secret to begin a new life. It's a secret to having healing in your own heart and life. And it's as simple as speaking to God. I say it out loud and just offer it to Him. God, I forgive so-and-so for what they did. And then sometimes you have to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for hating yourself. Forgive yourself for harboring bitterness and resentment against someone. And when you do that, Suddenly, there's a freedom that allows you to begin to walk forward in a new way. You can't look at Heather without recognizing that that's happened for her. There's a sweetness and a softness. That's what she said when she asked forgiveness and gave forgiveness. There was a softening that came into her heart and life. Before that, she said she wanted to hurt this person, and who could, who could argue with her about that? God's ways are different than our ways. They're higher than ways, but in them is freedom, victory, peace of heart and peace of mind, and eternal rest with Him. You can have that today. Would you like to embark on that journey with me? Let's pray together right now. Father, I'm listening to this story, and I'm seeing how you've mended what was broken, how you've brought beauty out of ugliness, how you brought life out of death. And God, I want that in my own heart and life. I'm coming to you today wounded and broken myself, and I'm just asking you to help me. I ask for your forgiveness for harboring bitterness and resentment in my own heart, and I offer my forgiveness to those who've hurt me, those who've wounded me, those who violated me. God, 
I ask that you would do a mighty work in my heart and life, that you'd touch me and change me, that what the enemy is meant for evil, you would work to good, that you would bring life out of death. Thank you. Jesus, be the Savior of my soul as well as the Lord of my life. Forgive all of my sins. Teach me how to live for you and fill me with the power and the presence of your Spirit. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, we want to send you something that will help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. It's called The Higher Calling, absolutely free, but filled with wonderful messages from the Word of God for you. We've also got a great little pamphlet that talks about the power of forgiveness. This is